as crazy as it may sound, if the assessor were to use a new number, the difference is about a million. So you're looking at you're essentially looking at saving 10,000 every year on your property tax, which is a lot. <laughs> Well, I hope it's not controversial to say this. I feel like the real estate prices has gone down quite a bit. Now it hasn't tanked like media made it out to be, but it's probably fair to say that it has gone down a fair bit. And I'll be the one to admit it. It does not feel good. I've been there before. So hopefully what I'm about to share with you guys will make you feel a little better. I want to thank Cindy for suggesting this video. I recently made a video on rent versus buy and a lovely subscriber, Cindy, left me a comment and say, hey, like, E, why don't you talk about how to save on property tax? And I was like, yes, this is something I do know a little bit about. And I'm really happy that you left me a comment. If you're watching and you have video ideas, please, please, please comment down below because I really love them. And obviously I am no tax professional, I'm not even a professional. I mean, I used to work as a product manager in tech and I was recently fun employed. So I've been making videos like what you're watching right now, mostly about lifestyle, finance, and whatever that seems to come to my mind. But yeah, I don't know much about tax, but I did manage to save $3,000 um, off of my property tax bill. And I know everyone says this, but this is actually very, very easy. Um, so hopefully I can help you save some money on your property tax, especially if you have my doc, which I'll link in the YouTube description down below. If you made it to work, please comment down below and let me know how long it took you so it can make me feel really good. Okay, so let's get into the video. Honestly, I couldn't remember how I stumbled upon this idea because, you know, being no tax professional, I actually had no idea that you can negotiate tax. <laughs> I mean, I know that you need to pay tax, pay in full, pay on time, etc. But I had no idea this is something you can also negotiate. But essentially, how I managed to save 3000 was to negotiate with the county on how my property should be assessed, which is what the property tax is calculated based on. What you want to do is to go to Google or Bin <laughs> and type in your county's name. In my case, it's San Mateo County and then decline in value. That's what you need to prove out in order to receive that deduction on your property tax. Now I should say not everyone is eligible. Uh, most people who purchase a property recently, last year, it is highly likely that your property has seen a decline in value. And that's when you can essentially talk to your county and say, hey, please don't use the sale price as a base year price because the price has come down. And this is what I believe is the fair market price for my property. Let's see. So if you were to click on the, one of the first few links, you'll see here that there is a simple application for you to fill out. I actually spent a good amount of time on writing that essay and I'll link it down below so you can, you know, save yourself some time. The way that you want to do it is let's let me pull up my essay here. What you need to do isn't awfully different from what you've already done when you were purchasing the property. What you want to do is first step, find three or four that are comparable properties to yours. And when we say comparable, you know, you want to make sure it's the same property type. If you're a single family, don't pick a condo. And then you want to find something that's in your neighborhood. So don't find something that's not relevant. And you, you likely already know it, but you want to make sure it's similar in size. Even when it's different, make sure that the delta isn't too big. So I think 300 is a good place to be in. Okay, so I thought about what property I should use as, as an example. And I remember recently seeing a post about a property that clearly oversold its price. Um, I just want to make sure that nobody is offended that I use this particular property. I chose it only because it's easy for me to illustrate that you can get a good amount of savings. I am in no way, shape or form trying to bully the owner or make fun of people who buy property in seemingly wrong timing. Yeah, I just want to throw that disclaimer out. Otherwise, you can enjoy the template because it's essentially built specifically for you. Okay, so in this case, I went on Redfin 
and then find the general area and pick out a few similar properties in terms of size, property type. And one thing that you want to make sure is you are picking properties that are sold around January 1st of the tax year. So in this case, we are in 2023. So I picked properties that were sold around December 1st to February 31st. Now, in your case, you might need to stretch that timeline a little bit. Just don't stretch that over um, six months. I think more or less you'll be fine. I think the tighter window might be better though because that is likely the closest to what the city would use as uh, comparable properties. So, as you can see here, I was able to pick out three properties that match the previous mentioned criteria and I just list them down below in the essays so it's easier for the assessor to know what property I'm using as the basis for my assessment. Okay. Chances are you're not going to be able to find the exact match. For example, the property might be slightly bigger in size, has more bedroom, bathroom, etc. Um, I also give some numbers to be able to adjust for that. So for example, additional bathroom and bedroom is around 15,000. And for the rest, the value of each square foot in my area is around 300. And I, you know, give a reference just so I have something to back up my reasoning, right? The last part, I promise you, is easy, right? Um, you're essentially doing math. What you're essentially doing here is to say, hey, these are the properties that are very similar to mine. And I've also accounted for the differences in terms of whether it's slightly bigger or smaller, more bedroom, bathroom, etc. This is what I believe my property would have been sold because I'm benchmarking it against the market value of the sale price of similar properties, right? Here in this example, I was able to calculate three different prices that represent how much my property should be valued at. And in the end, I take the average of the three prices and basically say, this is how much my property should be valued at. And if the assessor were to take your number as the actual value of the property, the differences is essentially the saving that you're going to be able to take into your pocket. As crazy as it may sound, if the assessor were to use a new number, the difference is about a million. So you're looking at, you're essentially looking at saving 10,000 every year on your property tax, which is a lot. <laughs> now you might ask, is the assessor going to just like trust my number and use my number? The answer is no. So what happened in my case was that the assessor and I, basically met somewhere in between. I didn't feel the need to like appeal again because I was moderately happy with the number. The other question is um, how long are you going to be able to use that number? The short answer is you will be able to use this number until the market bounces back to the price that you paid for. So for this property, unfortunately, it will probably be quite a few years until it will go up from 1.6 million to 2.6 million. In my case, I think I was able to use it for a year and a half, give or take. Hopefully I was able to explain how to do it. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any video ideas like Cindy, please leave me a comment. I would love to make more videos like this. Um, in terms of what's coming up, I am going to do the worst money advice. I'm glad that I didn't follow video. I also want to do how I saved X amount of money by 25. Uh, I also want to share just like how much money I made with under 1000 subscribers and just what it feels like to be a super small, tiny creator. And I know someone else asked for a what I eat in a day video. So that is coming up as well. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, yeah, but if you want me to create other type of video, do let me know in the comments below. I would love to fulfill.